You are tuned in to the Bird Walking Podcast, only this show is not about birds. Bird walking is when a conversation flows easily from one topic to another, and your hosts, Natalie and Brandon, discuss topics ranging from Seattle, everyday life, current events, and many more. So let's begin. Bird walking. Baby boomers from 1946 to 1964, and Generation X being 1965 to 1980. Okay. And then millennials from 1981, no... One no to 1996. That seems really. I, I kind of feel like there's like a like a five year. It should be like like 80 to 85 is like a Gen Y like thing, or it's like a buffer thing. Well, and actually, from what Abe was saying earlier, and what I've heard from other people say, it'd probably be like 78. 88. <laughs> so, what generation are you? Um, t- hardcore Gen X. Like, I have a choice. No, I'm definitely Gen Xer. Hardcore. Hardcore. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, yeah, definitely Gen X. So, like, um, in the set, like, born in the seventies, basically yep. came to um, fruition or became a teenager in the eighties. <laughs> so, like, if we grew up in the eighties, with all that it, that entails, we're definitely Gen X, right? Yeah, for sure. So, um, what happened to us? Yeah, that's a good question. I was I was thinking about this, um, and I I I was wondering if it had anything to do with computers. Um, because we didn't, most Gen Xers did not grow up using computers at home. I mean, we had one, but you know what I mean? Not like, we, there was no internet when we were growing up. Let's say it that way. Um, so I'm, I wonder if th- that may have had something to do with it. There's definitely a, a cultural difference between our generation and... So yeah, so generally uh, what we're talking about or what we're referring to here, guys, is... Um, like a good example, it seems it seems like in a lot of the conversations we've been hearing lately about millennials and boomers and Gen Y, whatever that means, um, there's very little mention of Gen X anymore in any of this kind of demographic stuff. And the, um, you know, so I came across an article that I barely read uh, that said <laughs> um, it's talking about how to get along with the millennials in your office, and it kept saying the difference between a millennial is blah blah blah, and the difference between boomers is they need this and this and this, and I kept thinking. Boomers, they're, they're out of the office. They're retired at this point. You're, the people that you're dealing with that are the old people are the Gen X. And I find that really weird because I remember when it first got, we first kind of got labeled as that, it was all over the place. We were, that was Gen X. And it wasn't it wasn't like uh, or in the early 80s with Madonna and stuff. It was more like uh, Nirvana and the grunge movement. And we were all the Gen X and we were the losers that had no ambition. Uh, we weren't going to do anything with our yeah, lives. Yeah. And we, cause, because we were raised on MTV, we had, you know, and we just had everything given to us. We were the nobodies. Well, you know what I'm thinking in this, this whole baby boomer millennial argument thing that's happening. I think the reason why we're not being included is because we don't argue as much about it. <laughs> so it kind of goes to our personality of the Gen no, X. Yeah, because like, I do think, whatever. Um, cause, yeah, I was talking to someone who's exactly a month older than me about this <laughs> last night. And, you know, he said, we were the first generation to really be super open minded. Now, you can argue the baby boomers were first, but, you know, with the um in the 60s and right. the, the hippies and all that kind of stuff but i think that once they kind of settled down and a lot of them not all of them a lot of them kind of started they're like oh i have money now so i don't actually care about other people as much as i did when i was well, younger and, which is totally and, normal and, by mo- the way. our mom said something a, a long time ago that i thought was that kind of blew my mind at the time was she's like you know Everything you hear about the late sixties that was about Woodstock and everybody was living in a van and had beads in their hair and everything. And she says that's absolutely not what was really right. going on. The huge majority of us were conservative, were still trying to get away with plaid poodle skirts and wearing our hair up and had we had wanted nothing to do with those dirty people. So she said it's a total misrepresentation of the general populace. Um, At the time, everyone thinks that's how the 60s were. So to your point, though, it wasn't really all that free loving. It was like it was after that that. And then, of course, then you have to tie in the fact that the boomers came of age right basically in the Reagan era. So right when they were getting their homes and having money Mm -hmm. was right in that whole um, I've got my money. Screw everybody else kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Um, absolutely. And I think whereas we um, punk was a big one. Right. And, and that's uh, a lot of punk is just like, do what you want. But um, 
fight against the machine. Don't fight against each other. And I could be completely wrong on that. But I do feel like it's, you know what I mean? So it was kind of like fight against something, which we got from the 60s as well. Um, but we saw a lot. We saw we started seeing the, the Benetton, Benetton ads with, um, you know. Oh, all the colors uh, of Benetton. Color, and, yeah, and yeah. all that kind of stuff, which you yeah. didn't really see before that. So I think that we got a lot of messages about, you well, know, uh, kids now or, you know, 20-somethings now would totally laugh at us as far as stuff that we did do and did celebrate and so forth. But I do think that that's where a lot of this stuff started, especially because a lot of um, millennials and younger are being raised by Gen Xers. And right. I feel like that gets lost a lot. Like we were, we were woke before woke was woke was a thing. Yeah. I mean, relatively speaking, obviously, if you look at it, like everything has changed so rapidly though. Cause I came across a, a comic book, because I have a small collection of small little um, funny comic books, not like uh, serial comic books, like joke books and things like that. And there's, there was one that was really popular for a while. It was even made into a TV show called like The Mostly Fabulous Life of Ethan Green. And it was it was a gay affirmative comic, um, uh, super funny, hilarious. But I picked it up, pulled it off the bookshelf the other day to read it bed. And it's crazy dated. And it's only 20 years old, maybe 23 years old or something. And it's so out of date as far as like <laughs> yeah. what gay issues are, what's what's progressive, what would be considered avant-garde and stuff. And it's just so, I had to put it down. I'm like, I can't even, this is not even readable anymore. <laughs> but the point being is that now we're like, we're so like, that was really quote woke at the time, but we're now our current generation, we're so far beyond that. Like we, like because of the internet, we are hyper aware of every little like thing we could do to step on someone else's toes. Um, yeah, yeah. But so back to the same thing. What What's funny is that why? So it just seems like the Gen X thing has gotten lost a little bit, and we don't even know who um, all the different things. So it's been basically divided into like you're either a millennial, millennial, or you're not, and. Um, I don't know where we got lost in there, but I think, Natalie, to your, you were kind of saying there was some things that we, like being like with the internet and things like that. I think that I kind of feel like we're the first internet generation and maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. so what is there, uh, Abe, is there a difference between, like, is there a thing between boomers and, or it was boomers, Gen X, then millennials or what's, do you know? Uh, it was, it was boomers and then Gen X, but I'm going to pull this up real quick. Um, I just I'm pretty sure it's boomers before Gen X, but it's not showing me that. So let me look at six more rows of this. Thing. And then it's like, <laughs> like, but I mean, I always thought that was like Gen Y was the thing for a minute, but did he? Did but they, I think that's yeah, I think that's been incorporated become... into millennials. I think maybe that was like the first um, name of the post Gen X people, but it's kind of been eaten by the millennial. Yeah, I got baby boomers from 1946 to 1964. And mm -hmm. Generation X being 1965 to 1980. Okay. And then Millennials from 1981 to 1996. That seems really... I, I kind of feel like there's like a five-year... It should be like like 80 to 85 is like a Gen Y like thing. A or it's like a buffer thing. Well, and actually, from what Abe was saying earlier and what I've heard from other people say, it'd probably be like 78 to 83, something like that. Right. But there's probably a thing where, like, you, you know, it's sort of like um, uh, horoscope signs. You could be right in the middle of it where you're super intense, like you're very, very much a Taurus versus you could be on the cusp of it. So maybe there's yeah. a generational, like, is <laughs> sort of, you're, you're right. That was, like, what I thought I was because I was born in 79. And, you know, we, computers weren't, we didn't have the internet. I mean, through the 80s, I was growing up through the 80s watching the 80s. TV shows and, and yeah. all that stuff, and uh, we were a little rare. My dad's big into computers, so we had like the Apple II Plus, and with the, with the Apple II GS. Yeah, we had yeah. the Apple. We had the Apple II yeah. GS. We had a Commodore. <laughs> no, a, a no, a Texas Instrument. Yeah, the TI. Yeah, and we it had, had a, um, an actual tape for tape backup. You know, we had the little dad's a uh, tape recorder yeah. sitting there that we would always on the little black yeah. and white TV. <laughs> hey, get this. So there's Generation X. Uh, there's another list I'm looking at. Generation X from 1960 starts. At 1965, mm -hmm. and then I see Xennials. X, X, oh. Xennials. Yeah. Oh, 1975. That be... Yeah. That starts, and then Millennials start at 1980, and then iGen slash Gen Z starts in 1995. That so, makes, that's what the... I've heard. So they're the they're the young ones now that are coming into the workplace. But like, yeah. it's weird. It's super weird now that Millennials are already getting old. You are tuned in to the Bird Walking Podcast. Bird Walking.
See, that's another thing about just getting old in, in general is how time doesn't really go as quickly as when you're 20s, old people are old. And when you're <laughs> when you're in your late 40s like I am, you're still not that old. And it's just, and and the years go by and like and it's just funny to watch like the generations kind of get old and they all sort of catch up with you as far as being an adult and things like that and they have to start going through the same problems and you're like, "Ha, ah, you were young and now you're old." Like <laughs> I know, but it's such a weird feeling the day that you're like the day you start calling people in their 20s kids. Well, yeah, there's this kid at work. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm my mother now. But it, it, that is what it is, you know. And it's okay. So I have my only complaint about millennials, swear, is there's this weird space thing that I encounter with some millennials at work, personal space thing, that I'm really sure is born out of. Well, okay. At like least, what? Like what's the space thing? Okay, so for instance, there's, I think I told you about the girl that I'm not a fast walker. Show us the visuals. You got a board? Yes, right, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't... look right here on Exhibit A. <laughs> uh, this is Ritzer. This is... Um, yeah, there was a, I was listening to someone's podcast the other day, and the guy's like, he's like, I'm so sorry. I know this, is a, uh, this isn't a visual medium, but I brought these handouts. <laughs> <laughs> Handouts, even that's yeah. Right. And the host is like, the, the host is like, we, we got a video feed. Don't worry about it. It's like really cute. He's like, I know this is stupid, but, but I got, I these, got these. He's like, we'll post them online too. It was great. He's like, he's like, okay, I don't know these words are coming out of my mouth, but um, so okay, like um, a g- girl that works on the other team. So. God damn it, you're right. So this woman on the other team, right? Yes. Sits next to me in the bus a couple times. You know how you don't look at each other running the bus, so I get that. Right, but right. we get off at different spots that are about equidistance from our office, and more than once she stepped right in front of me to open the door to get into the building. And then we're like, hurry off to get on the elevator. And it the second time it dawned on me is because she's worried about being late. Whereas I'm like, I will get there when I get there. <laughs> and I do think a 20-year difference does that to you. Um, but holy crap, girl. <laughs> you need to be way more aware of what you're doing. Well, is, I mean, just rude. I'm like... <laughs> And there's a gal who, like I said, I don't walk that fast. And part of it, I don't have a very long stride. Um, I also have tiny feet for my size. It's She just doesn't care. I try, man. But anyway, so <laughs> I get that people walk faster than me. But at work, our hall is not big enough to pass people. It's just dumb. But there's this chick that has, one time she tried it and then realized it was stupid because we were both going to the bathroom. So basically she gets right next to me right by the door as I'm about to turn into it. Well, it's so weird. I'm like, what are you doing? Well, that's that weird bubble thing that people do, particularly in what's really big. Like, I, I, when you're walking a sidewalk and someone sort of comes out of a door and then joins you right next to you and then walks next to you're you like, for pause. So you're like, dude, will you just what take a breath? Just, yeah, and be just like, like slow oh, down a little bit. I can, if I just take a second, I'll be right behind it. Like, it's the weirdest thing. You're like, just expand your bubble for a second. You'll see there's a guy. Yeah, a large guy next to you. <laughs> well, the third one was the other day. I was getting um, something out of the vending machine. And, you know, you can use your card and stuff. And I was waiting so I could, if you don't, I, basically it says you can use $3.50. And I didn't use all that. So then I want to clear it. I don't want someone using the rest of my money. Oh, right, right. And this girl was, I'm not kidding, a foot behind me the whole time. I'm like, it... what are you doing? <laughs> That's super weird. You're supposed it's... to go stand around some around the corner and yeah. for a minute. Wait for yeah. It was so so. And I the thing about all three of these women were they're all about the same age. And that it, but really I work with millennials and I don't have a problem it's with interesting. them. Interesting. I, the... I never encountered the the space issue. The one thing I encountered with quote millennials. I always say quote because everyone's different and we get, they've gotten so much flack. And the truth yeah. is they're the same as everything else. They get beat up when they're young and then they learn and they they become right. responsible yeah. adults. And but there are a lot of trends. Like I'm I'm off, I'm digressing. But there's a lot of trends. Like they like really. I met so many young people that I was even friends with and stuff that have no idea how to adult. The basics, like just were not raised with how to clean your room, how to clean the kitchen, how to do laundry, how to keep like just the regular basic adulting things that I, I literally have been like, Hey, if you just do this every day, you'll be much happier. Like, wow, that's amazing. Like insurance. What is insurance? Like I've, I've literally had to even teach some friends like how to adult. And I think that I feel like that's not just, my friends it's like an actual thing that but well you know who to blame for that is the gen xers yeah 100 percent. it is so strange because they're like you know what do your thing we don't want to put any boundaries on you man you just be yourself whoever you, you just or be I'll the do best it for person you. you're gonna be you know, we have a friend who um didn't know how to really clean the house or anything because her mother's a stay-at-home mom and 
was bored, so she'd just clean the whole house every day. So she'd do all of her children's chores. She'd make their beds, do and all that. And there's <laughs> that yeah. did not happen in our house. Uh, <laughs> no, that was not wow. a thing. So do you remember no. our mom would actually on like a Saturday afternoon, the fr- our friends would come over and she would say. No one gets to go out and play until the, whole the living room is cleaned. Yeah. And yeah. she would hand rags and stuff and, yeah. and stuff and to my okay friends. Yeah. And they loved it. I, I'm sure if they were at home, they'd been like been complaining, but like, oh, this is great. And they'd clean or the like, mantle. Or like, here, chop up and, this apple. Or, yeah, you know, do chop up the yeah. food or vacuum and stuff. And they freaking loved it. Like, it happened like all the time. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> sorry. I mean, my dad's never going to let me wash the van again. That's not a thing. <laughs> well, yeah, I notice with my kids, I kind of do do something that's kind of like the the Gen X parenting style combined with like old school parenting. So uh, sort of old school because I'm not that old school. But uh, (laughs) what I mean by that is like I like to get my kids to help me cleaning or Mm -hmm. come in the kitchen and let's crack some eggs. Even if they can't fully crack the egg, it's like, okay, let's put the egg in the bowl and yeah. let's mix it up right and i have them mix it now just mix that it keeps them busy right mix that <laughs> while i go over here and do this and i'll just tell them you know just break up the break up the egg just stir it and break up the egg so i'm hoping that the they start to grasp at a young age the things how to cook or how to and if you needed to you know you could go in and get the out of the fridge and crack it open and do it even if you're not sure the whole thing, right? right? Yeah, yeah. At the same time, I also noticed that a lot of times I just want to do stuff for them. For them, I just it's because it's it. easier, or yeah, it's that's just, a, you just I take just it out of their hand. I used to manipulate <laughs> yeah. that. I would. Um, it was so weird because I. It's so funny because I'm not real. I'm not good at manipulating people, but this one I figured out at a young age is if I do it poorly, my dad will take it away from me. And I absolutely would do that. Like, I don't understand how this works. And then he'd go, okay, I'll, do, you know, well, I'll just do it. And she's like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I think I, I, my kids do that. I know they do it. And then sometimes I actually it. didn't know how it worked. So there's a, I there's didn't that, understand some things. There's a poem by Shel Silverstein. It's like, Which if, one, if, the, um... if you have to dry the dishes, such an awful, boring chore. <laughs> if you have to dry the dishes and you drop one on the floor, then maybe they won't make you dry the dishes anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about Shel Silverstein. I remember those. Yeah, we had a lot of them memorized, actually. What's the, my mom there's was the, the, the girl them. that, something stout who won't take the garbage Sarah, Sarah Sylvia Cynthia Stout would not take, take the garbage, garbage out. out. Yeah. Um, so Wait, when I want to tell you something about plates, though, before I forget. <laughs> okay. Okay. But the the corny were plates, and then you drop yep. it, wouldn't break, and right. it, it would break randomly. Okay. They break when they're wet. Oh, is that what? Did you actually look that up? Or no, something? I learned it on the YouTubes. The YouTubes, <laughs> you kids and your, your and your YouTubes, you kids and your YouTubes. Yeah. So I was just like, <laughs> oh my god, like just yeah, it and it because it was always well, I mean yeah, it was always when we were drying them, the worst chore. Okay, I know they're I clean the cat pan, which grosses people out, but drying dishes makes me insane. Yeah, it's not <laughs> like when they're all wet and everything. Just let them dry. So. Anyway, to, I get, to sort of wrap it up, though, like, you, I was you, like what the, is but, our topic? but the internet, though, like, so my only thing that, I, like I said, I think is kind of going away a little bit, but it used to be that millennials would be, you'd say, um, um, oh, yeah, and it's kind of like Knight Rider. And they'd be like, what? Who? Who's that? Or or even, you know, oh, I lo- the, there was a Golden Girls marathon on this weekend. We watched the, we watched the, it's like, who are the Golden Girls? I'm like, you know who they are I, had, like, I, I was like just take a second you have the web right in front of you I, I know said you the can. Hardy Boys the other day my coworkers like wait the what and I'm like Ugh. but it's not even the, it's not even that they don't know it's the it's the who no like, right because... like this is not my world like, you're like that's like old people things I don't right. know what you're like, <laughs> yeah. it's so infuriating yeah, in, class, uh, cla- uh, in one of my classes one day we're on break and someone in the room says so it's like the like kids are all talking to each other and I'm at my desk and one of the kids says Anyone know what time it is? And I'm at my desk and I just said tool time to myself. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. anywhere time, tool time. And the 16 year old, Anna, goes, <laughs> She totally knew what I was well, talking so, about. What I, I almost feel like there's a like a next thing because I've got a fairly decent friend that I uh, he's a theater geek friend and he's probably 22 or something and he's crazy knowledgeable about all of it. Like he he has really depth knowledge of like he could name stuff from um, you know Motown songs and and stuff from the 80s and the night like he so it's kind of like this new thing I think now like it's like we've gone past that. I'm in my world. You're ignorant. Like I'm just gonna be I woke think, about all of it. I think that and it's our experience as well that it's because their parents and our parents included us in what they were doing. We know all this music because that's what mom listened to in the car and made us sing along with it. 
and I, that's probably what goes on with what went on with yeah, him as well. I, so, versus just like, oh, the kids are in the room and now they have right, a TV right. in their room and all that kind of stuff. So it's completely divergent. But I, th- I really think know. the web does everything. It can maybe to wrap up the topic and sort of maybe this whole generational thing isn't that important anymore because of the web. So. You and I both, for instance, belonged to a community band for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And it occurred to me one time that what was really fascinating about it is that the age range in the band was easily from 18 to 65, 70. Easily. And it became easier and easier to share the same culture. The same jokes were funny through intergenerational because of... Band geek humor. The web keeps us... Like, everyone knows the one time at band geek or band camp joke. But it's... But it... It, it becomes like um, age is less, um, like the world is flat. There's a lot more flat than it used to be. So 40 used to be like you're old and ancient because typically you had kids, you were married, you had the job. Like now everything is kind of just so much more flat that you could be having all kinds of different life experiences at any age. That So we're not quite as, as I mean, pigeonholed yeah, as we I used to be. I spent last night playing video games with friends. Right, which is you know there's and I and that's obviously a choice of how you live your life or whatever. But I know there are tons of people my age that'd be like, "What?" Where I'm like, "There's no age restriction on this stuff. There, there's not. I don't. Yeah, I don't think there is a time that you just put up the games and toys and." Become but so an like, adult but anymore. we have a couple of friends that do have a couple children and they're married and stuff like that. But you wouldn't wouldn't you say that they probably are not acting nearly as as adult or no, that's what I'm saying. I just don't think that our that mom at that age, right? Yeah, I think it probably does in some more conservative uh, uh, communities and so forth. You know, bird walking. Mm-hmm.